Hello everyone out there. Thank you for joining us today at the Community Church of Mount Pleasant. This is Pastor David and I am so thankful that you have decided to join with us during this midweek. A little bit of a chance for us to visit and what a wonderful thing for us to be able to come to see you wherever you are in your home or uh, wherever you are there with your computer and and uh, we're just glad to be able to do that. Glad to say hello to you and and again, thank, thankful for Ken who comes up and helps us with this, takes time out of his schedule. And, and we understand yesterday was his birthday. So, Ken, thank you for, for your sacrifices and your work and your help. And, and happy birthday. And, and, and thankful to your family for letting you help us. So, uh, boy, exciting things about our church, man. We had a great day Sunday. Um, amazed at our actually our growth and the way God is blessing and providing for us as a church. Uh, just so thankful for that. We're we're continuing to see new families visit our church and and uh, just watch God kind of build, build this thing and put it all together. We we do want to make some announcements, some things that are coming up. This Sunday is is kind of a full day for our church. November twenty. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is uh, our Sunday is communion. We have this once a quarter as a church family. And this is a sweet, reflective time uh, for us as a church family. I love coming together as a family, as a body, and, and uh, having communion together, taking the Lord's Supper, and just, just getting a little bit of perspective. So excited about that and some other neat things in the service that you're going to enjoy. We're also, this Sunday is our Operation Christmas Child box, uh, shoe boxes are due, so bring them in. I know Mary and I went out and got ours done, and, and uh, she has all that together. We're going to bring them in Sunday, and we're going to bring them up to the stage, pile them up, and we're going to have a dedication time for those those uh, Operation Christmas Child, because they're all going to go somewhere, and they're going to be hand-delivered to a child somewhere in the world. And, and we're going to pray that God the Holy Spirit anoints those shoe boxes and His Word which is in those and, and that they will feel and sense and come to know the grace of God by, by the efforts that you're doing with the shoe boxes. So that's happening this Sunday. And then after church Sunday, we're going to go up to the farm and, and we're going to have a soup kitchen lunch. This will be kind of a fundraiser. The proceeds will go to benefit our first missions trip this spring to Nicaragua. And so, man, don't plan for lunch this week. Uh, ladies, you don't have to cook. And dads, we don't have to go to the restaurant. We're coming out to the farm. And we're going to have soup together for a donation that will go toward our missions trip. So that'll just be another uh, really fun thing. And then we got some seasonal things coming up. Do you guys understand that one week from Thursday is Thanksgiving Day? I can't believe it. And, and I love it because I, I love holidays. I love... Christmas and Thanksgiving and I love being able to be with our families and I love all the food and I love to watch football and I love all that. And so one week from Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. And so uh, we're moving into that. It seemed like getting into Thanksgiving and then Christmas is just right afterwards. So a couple things. Our Mount Pleasant Christmas Parade is Saturday, December 10. And uh, man, we're in every parade here in Mount Pleasant. We're, we've got our float we're going to put together and set up and decorate. And we're just going to have a great time. Our kids will be up there. And all of us adults will be involved in the parade. Uh, and you'll have more details in the bulletin. And, and you'll hear more about that Sunday. And then some other events. Our parents' day out, parents' night out are coming up to help you as parents drop your kids off. And then we will babysit them. And you can go out to eat, go out to dinner. Go Christmas shopping gives you a couple of hours to be with your husband or your wife and, and enjoy that time. And then, of course, uh, our church musical will be December 11. And that will be called Our Gift, His Presence. And I'm very excited. This will be our first real production as a church. And, and just, just real excited about that. So a lot of things that we're going to be having coming up. And I just I just love this time of year. It's beautiful weather. It's cool. It's fresh. It's exciting, and God is good, and uh, just a great time in our church. So let me let me go now to the Word for a couple minutes here. Now I want us to look at First Thessalonians chapter uh, chapter four, uh, actually chapter five. I'm sorry, and and I want to read some verses here. And and our thought is since since we're at, at Thanksgiving time is next week, and so I want to give you a verse right here in the middle of this package, this this little nugget right here. So I want to give you a little background. And remember, I'm always talking to you about get the whole context. 
So we never want to pull out one little thought when we out of context. So let's begin 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and let's start with verse 12. Paul is writing to this church at Thessaloniki and he is writing to them and giving them exhortation which means and I just covered the back to basic series where I was the coach and I was I was coaching the team. Paul is exhorting the church. That means he's coaching them and he's encouraging them and he's charging them and he's and he's giving them a pep talk. And so let's begin with verse 12 of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And we beseech you, brethren, family, brothers and sisters, our church family, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So he said, be aware of those who, who work with you and serve you and teach you and coach you and help you. Be aware of those, know them, and to esteem them very highly interesting thing he says to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and esteem them very highly in love for their works sake the spiritual leaders in your life you are to be aware of them Paul says and you are to esteem them very highly because theirs is a, is a, a very high calling of God is to be a spiritual coach a spiritual leader in your life and he says, esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourself. Now, I want to move to verse 14, and I want you to do this. I, I enjoyed English, and I know that's weird, but I, I, was, I really liked it, and, and I loved sentence structure, and I loved finding the subjects and the verbs and diagramming and all that, and I know that's weird, but I do, and so I'm just wired like that. I want you to look at the verbs in these next few verses. And I'm going to point them out to you. Verse 14, Paul is coaching us. And he says, Now we exhort you, we coach you, we encourage you, brothers, warn them that are unruly. So there's the first, we're going to go through all these verbs because they're important. And they're, they're active verbs. And the first verb he says is, Warn them that are unruly. If you know those around you in your world, in your life, that are unruly, unruly is an interesting word and it's a good word. It's an appropriate word. If you know them, he said, warn them. And the next verb is comfort. Well, who do we comfort, Paul? We comfort the feeble-minded, those who are perhaps emotionally unstable or, or stressed or worried or frazzled or they're, they're feeble-minded. And we are to comfort them. The next verb is to support. All right, so we're going to warn them that are unruly. We're going to comfort the feeble-minded. We're going to support the weak. When, a, when something is weak, we have to support it. Otherwise, it's going to break. It's not going to make it. It's not going to withstand the pressure. So, brothers and sisters of the church, we need to support those who are weak. And then he says also, be patient toward all men. That's interesting. Alright, so watch verse 14. Warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, and then lastly in verse 14 it says, be patient to all. Said, no, no specifics here. You just be patient. Man, cut them some slack, I think is what Paul is saying. Because somebody's going to irritate you today. Somebody's going to get on your last nerve today. Perhaps a co-worker. Perhaps a stranger. Perhaps somebody at the fast food you're driving through. Perhaps somebody's going to get your order wrong, or maybe it's somebody that's in your family, maybe a child or a parent, and they're going to aggravate you. Coach Paul says to be patient toward all men. Cut them some slack, would you? Now, verse 15, let's progress. Let's continue with your verbs. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. See that. See to it that none render evil for evil. Next verb. Follow that which is good. That's enough to keep us busy right there, church. Follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. I wonder what you follow on the internet. What stories are you following on the news? What's, what are you following on Google, on Facebook? What's, what are you... Who are you following? Paul, Coach Paul says, follow that which is good and wholesome and pure and right. Now, 
verse 16. Let's continue to move with our verbs. Verse 16 is one of the shortest verses in the Bible. It has two words. Verse 16 says two things, two words. Rejoice evermore. What about that? Rejoice. Don't gripe and grumble and complain evermore forever, but rejoice evermore. Verse 17. Pray without ceasing. Wow. Man, Coach Paul. Man, this is good. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. That means I can pray all the time. I can pray when I'm I don't have to have my head down, my eyes closed to pray. You're in a you're in a constant conversation in a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And you can pray without ceasing. Just talk to Him. Now, verse 18 is what I really want. This is the nugget, okay? This is the Thanksgiving nugget that I want you to see. In everything, give thanks. There is an incredible perspective on Thanksgiving. We have a tendency to thank the Lord for the good things. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this food. We thank you for our family. We thank you for our church. Coach Paul says in verse 18, In everything give thanks. In everything give thanks. That one is a little different perspective. So thank you, Coach Paul. So we're supposed to give thanks in everything. For this is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. You know, I've heard people say, Pastor, I just want to find God's will. I want to know God's will for my life. Well, guess what? Coach Paul says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. Guess what God's will is for you today? In everything give thanks. That's God's will. So, you can go uh, to your friend, your neighbor, your Facebook, and you can say, Guess what? I found God's will. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18, Paul says, The will of God in Christ Jesus is to give thanks in everything. That's quite a Thanksgiving message today. So I hope that affects your perspective and my perspective. I'm going to stop here because that's, that's a lot to chew on. So Coach Paul has given us a pep talk and he's talked about a lot of things, but I want to focus on verse 18. In everything today, church, give thanks. Because this is God's will for you and for me. Thank you so much for joining with us in our midweek message for letting us come visit you. If you do not have a church to attend Sunday, 1030, the Mount Pleasant Elementary School, this community church family will overwhelm you with love. I love this church. We're excited. I'm praying for you today, and uh, God bless you. Thank you for joining with us today.